Hey guys, this is Dr. Sandy with another educational video for you and your family. Today's topic is going to be sleep positions and which ones are the best one for you and your family. If you're new to these videos, I want to welcome you. If you've been watching for some time, thank you for coming back. If you're enjoying these videos, please like, share, and subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. And let's jump into the information. So when we look at sleep positions, there's probably quite a few. I want to simplify things and really get to the core message there. There's really three major ones in my opinion. There's a back sleeper, side sleeper, and stomach sleeper. Of the three in my opinion, as long as you feel comfortable and please with every video I show you, um, always listen to your body and customize to see what works for you. But in my opinion, as a chiropractor now for over 20 years, I would recommend sleeping on your back. Back would be the best. We want to have a neutral position. We wouldn't want this happening with too many pillows. I can't imagine it, but if the head is too far back, that would be comfortable. We want it to be as neutral as possible, almost like you're standing. Um, that would be the best. And in fact, you may have a small pillow or you may even want to just roll up a towel for support as long as you're comfortable and you can tolerate that. That would be my suggestion, sleeping on your back. I would also suggest maybe some pillows underneath the knees just to make you more comfortable. So we have a support over here. We have a support underneath the knees, of course, if you're comfortable. And this would also be uh, recommended for someone who has sciatica. This would be a good way to sleep. Um, you want to kind of position to see what's comfortable with the pillow uh, with your knees. But this may be something to look into. But sleeping on your back is the best. Let's say that doesn't work for you. Maybe because you just can't fall asleep. Uh, you have breathing issues, you just don't feel comfortable, maybe there's more snoring or other issues like that. So the next best position would be sleeping on your side. Sleeping on your side again, if someone were to look at you and when you're sleeping, what you would want to see is that you are in a straight line. So we don't want to see the head over here with too many pillows. A lack of pillows would look like this. So if you're a side sleeper, a good pillow will actually be based on your shoulder. If you also sleep on your side, what you want to do is put a pillow between the knees. Uh, that would definitely make you more comfortable. How can you start teaching yourself to sleep this way? So let's say you've slept in different positions. You're like, well, Dr. Sandy, I see what you're saying. You know, uh, I'd like to sleep on my side. Um, I'm not sure if I can. How can I train myself? I would just get a pillow in the front and behind you. And it kind of becomes a reminder throughout the night that if you bump into it, um, it gets you closer to that neutral position that we want. Uh, and again, if I can, if you get anything out of this video, so sleeping on your stomach is the worst, puts a lot of stress on the spine, a lot of stress on the nerve system. And here's a thing you should be asking yourself. If you're getting up in the morning and you are feeling uh, neck pain, you feel that kink in your neck, you're stiff and you're sore uh, on a kid's, you know, if it's once in a blue moon, I wouldn't worry about it. But if it keeps happening, look at your sleep position and related to the sleep position as well is the pillow that you could be using. And I've listed it here. You know, again, I'm going to say with a pillow, it's a very personal thing. Um, I've had patients tell me they don't use a pillow. Some do use a pillow. What's the best pillow? What's worked really well for me, and I highly, highly recommend it, is something called a buckwheat pillow. Uh, it almost has, like, if you were to open it up, it looks like beans or grains inside from buckwheat. Um, it's a more firm pillow. So the general principle is a firm pillow a firmer mattress would be advised. And if you're listening to this, sometimes if uh, you are feeling very uncomfortable and there's a lot of back issues, uh, what I do recommend to certain patients if it's really intense is sometimes getting a few blankets on the ground, preferably a carpeted ground, and then you can sleep on the floor. But again, you're always gonna see what works best for you. And that's more for patients who are in extreme uh, back pain, that may be an option. So the pillows, we want it to be firm. My recommendation would be a buckwheat pillow. I know the other popular option is a memory foam pillow. Um, I'm always going to be a little more biased towards things that are natural, things that can breathe. Um, so that just, just something to look into. But as much as you can as an overall philosophy, try to go natural even with your mattress if you can, uh, with your pillow, with a mattress. So if I had to uh, put it on a scale, let's say zero is one that sinks and 10 would be sleeping on the ground as hard as possible, you probably want to buy a mattress that's like about a 7 or an 8. So it wants to be more firm. I know there's a lot of new technology and things are changing all the time, but I would say in my opinion as well, try to actually buy a mattress that still has some coils. You do need some support. Um, in my opinion, again, firmer is better. And I've seen patients when the bed is literally sinking, it's too soft, it, there's no support, it's not good for the spine. Now, I'm going to talk about some exceptions, too, and things we have to be aware of when we're sleeping. Uh, breathing issues. So, again, if you're sleeping, 
and there's breathing issues, again, with the snoring, or you just can't breathe properly, you probably won't be able to sleep on your back. You may have a couple of pillows propping you up to help you breathe. And I also know people who have acid reflux, sometimes they do this. So you're always going to customize and say, okay, I'm hearing this information. How can I apply it to myself? I'm going to give you a big tip as well. So if uh, yourself or you know someone you love has ever had dizzy spells or vertigo, that's a time where I've seen clinically people will say that when they first get up in the morning or they're just about to sleep or in the middle of the night, if they shift their head, they can get a vertigo symptom, um, extreme headaches, dizziness. So those patients, what I'd recommend is you're probably going to sleep more in a seated position. So some pillows behind you, like you're going to read a book, maybe a recliner. Um, I would not recommend lying on the pillow until the vertigo and dizziness uh, passes. So something to think about. Another thing I've heard clinically is a lot of patients will say that, Dr. Sandy, you know, when I get up in the morning or the middle of the night, depending on what side I'm sleeping on, I'm getting numbness and tingling. Obviously, we don't want that. So what I would recommend is obviously maybe sleeping on the opposite side. You want to measure how is the sleep? How are you getting up in the morning? You are going to be a scientist. You want to see the sleep patterns. But if you're getting that, um, that is not a good sign. That shouldn't be happening every single morning. Uh, the other things I'd recommend as well is we want to look at for the best sleep temperature, light, and sound. What is the temperature of your room? The temperature uh, should be a little bit on the cooler side, but you should be comfortable. Seasons are changing all the time, but you should be very, very comfortable, obviously, to get the best sleep possible. How is the lighting? Now, I will, <laughs> I'll tell you this as well. Like I know I've read a lot of uh, research on this, and they say, you know, as dark as possible, as dark as possible. I find a little bit of light coming in from the window. I like that. Um, you know, you got to see what works for you. I find if it's too dark, I feel like I have to get up at night, you know, with those kind of things. But um, again, look at the lighting that suits you. Obviously, we don't want it too bright, dark as possible, but you want to customize to see what works for you. And sound. So this is a funny thing. Um, I learned this from my wife. Uh, so when we had our boys, when they were growing up, when they were small, she was very uh, big about using the sound machine. And I was like, okay, I, you know, that's kind of a different concept. I kind of heard it. I, maybe in the past I used it a couple of times, but uh, we did it with our kids. And the funny thing is now, maybe uh, when I look back, um, we were, you know, using it on the kids and maybe I found it soothing or whatever. So I started to implement it for myself. So now every night before I go to bed, uh, you know, I will turn on like some water sounds or something like that or whatever works for you. But having a sound that may be relaxing for you, maybe something to consider. Uh, water sounds is one. Actually, the one I use that would be more accurate is the one of that fan noise. I don't know why I find that so soothing. Water sounds, I apologize. I use that more for my meditation. But the fan noise, uh, and literally I'll, I'll go to the internet and just, you know, find a site. And I'm listening to that sound. I find it soothing and it really gets me into a deep sleep. So that may be something to look into as well. One final tip I'm going to close with, if you can and you want to have the best sleep possible as well, if you can stretch before you go to bed, there's something very powerful about that. You'll have a better sleep. Um, you'll get up feeling better. And I said that's the last tip, so I'm going to say this is a bonus tip. Uh, another thing I would recommend, regardless of you know whatever you feel comfortable with, prayer, meditation, deep breathing exercise, whatever works for you, maybe listening to a jazz song, maybe listening to something soothing, relaxing before you go to bed, even five, 10 minutes. I really encourage that with my patients, especially a nice deep breathing exercise um, would be a great idea before you go to bed so you get the best sleep possible. So I hope these tips helped you. Again, if you're enjoying these videos, please like, share, sub subscribe. You're awesome. I wish you and your family only the best of health, all the best moving forward. And God bless you.